This episode is brought to you by my friends at Patreon. And, once again, by Singularity G3, whose images have given life to this journey since it began. Having been distracted of late by an annoying series of minor infections, I decided to save time by putting out another quick update to one of my long-running series. Ah, yes. The Ten Parsec Map. Thanks again to Kevin Jardine for drawing it up. I've had a lot of fun voyaging across it since the pandemic, and have been thinking of doing a few more videos to finish it off, should my fellow seekers be interested. Our knowledge of this region of the universe is always changing, and on October 23rd, one of the stars I covered in my last You Are Here video, Wolf294, gained an additional, and very exciting, planet. Nearby stars tend to have many names, and while it may be the 294th planet discovered by the Teutonically redoubtable Maximilian Franz Josef Cornelius Wolf, it was also the 251st discovered by the heroically obsessive Wilhelm Gliese, who wouldn't let four years in a Soviet gulag deter him from finding stars. Which is why the paper in question calls it Gliese 251. I suppose I'll have to start calling it that as well. As I noted in my last You Are Here video, Gliese 251 is a largish red dwarf about twice the size of Proxima Centauri, or a third the size of the Sun. In 2019, a super-Earth of about four Earth masses was found orbiting the star about every 14 days. While over-exuberant initial predictions placed the planet in 251's habitable zone, this proved untenable as no model could get its surface temperature below the boiling point of water. On the 23rd of October, however, a team led by Corey Beard of the University of California, Irvine, identified a second planet in orbit around Gliese 251. And this one is almost certainly in its star's habitable zone. This second planet, known as Gliese 251c, is nearly identical to the first, in fact, the two planets' most probable masses differ from each other by just a quarter of a percent. This suggests that the Gliese 251 system, like most known extrasolar systems, but very much not like ours, is what is known as a similar system, with planets of nearly equal mass spaced a regular distance apart. The planet orbits its star in a little under 54 days. The reason it can be considered within its habitable zone is that Gliese 251, as per usual with red dwarfs, is very dim. Just 1.5% as luminous as the Sun. In fact, were this planet truly like Earth, it would have surface conditions akin to Mars. However, it is four times larger than Earth, which in turn likely grants it a dense atmosphere, which, if it were virtually opaque, could produce surface temperatures akin to Earth. The planet was found blowing that venerable workhorse of exoplanet detection, radial velocity, which found the first planet around a sun-like star in 1995. Radial velocity is the motion a planet makes forward and away from the eye. As things move toward the eye, they rise in frequency and appear slightly bluer. As they retreat, they lower in frequency and become slightly redder, the luminal equivalent of a police siren descending in tone as it moves down the street. As a planet tugs on its star, that star wobbles slightly toward and away from our line of sight, creating a minute red and blue shift. This shift is too minuscule to observe directly, but can be seen in a star's spectrograph, the rainbow of colors that comprise its light, deconstructed by a prism. Gliese 251 has spectrographic records going back to 1997, but it was the habitable zone planet finder a spectrograph at the McDonald Observatory in Texas that did the lion's share of the work. What makes this habitable planet candidate so enticing, say its discoverers, is that future generations of telescopes might be able to image it directly. The combination of the dimness of its star and the wide apparent angular separation means that, other than Proxima b, Gliese 251c is the best potentially terrestrial candidate for telescopes currently on the drawing board such as the 30-meter telescope, to snap. 
This matters because direct imaging is the only means to study the atmospheric composition of planets other than transits. And transits, which rely on precise alignments with our line of sight from Earth, are extremely rare. The closest known transiting exoplanet is 22 light years away, and we are unlikely to find any nearer to us. If we want to confirm the existence of an Earth like planet in our stellar neighborhood, direct imaging is likely the only way we'll do it. There is little else at present that can be said about Gliese 251c. The same paper announcing its discovery also mentioned that the team had determined the star's rotation period to be about 120 days, implying that it is very old, perhaps twice as old as the Sun. This means that if Gliese 251c is habitable, it has had a very long time to develop life. What form such life may take very much depends on what form of planet Gliese 251c is. Is it a larger version of Earth, with stout, fleshy hulks scuttling close to the ground? Does it have an atmosphere thick enough to support vast aerial ecosystems? Or is it a water world, with any land smothered by a gigameter-deep ocean? Until we can see it for ourselves, we won't know. <laughs>